and we're going to go from this to this. To start off with, we need to take everything out of the box. And just looking in it, you've got your two printer heads, you've got your rear stand that has got the carriage on it, um, and will support the, the spool holders as well for the filament. We've got two boxes which have the filament and all the accessories in to build this. So we just take those out. We take the rear. Let's move that first. I'm going to take the glass off the heat bed so that it doesn't get broken. We'll take the printer heads out. I recommend cutting this so that you can prise that back to lift it out. Otherwise you might end up damaging the print head. Now we'll take the base out. Right, so that's it, everything out of the box. Now let's get on setting it up. All right, so now everything's unpacked. We've got the, the guts of the machine, the base. We've got the heat bed, two nozzles, which is a left and a right. So the E1 is the left as it's facing you and the E2 is the right. And the best way to describe that is these need to be facing away from each other, the, uh, the fans, and you've got two fans in there. This one is for cooling the filament. There's also the glass that I removed earlier on. We'll put that on last. Here's the rear bracket and we've got the two holders for the nozzles there, left and right. And up on the top, that's where the filament holder goes. This is that attaches it to the heat bed. We'll go through that. And this is the contents of the two brown boxes. So we've got some filament cutters there. We've got an adapter to take the power cable from a two pin to a three K, uh, a three pin UK socket, nuts and bolts, tie it, a very sharp spatula, some conduit. Uh, these are the connectors for the printer heads. Various connectors there with a, an SD card. It's an SD card, uh, a USB SD card reader screwdrivers and spanners, some masking tape, USB connector cable, filament reel holders times two, and two rolls of filament. Let's just have a quick look at the bed and the various connections that are on it. And if we zoom into the side, there's a voltage switch. And obviously in the UK, we need that set to 230. On the back, we've got the on off button. And at the rear, we've got the power connector, the two connectors for the two print heads and the hotbed connector. And at the front on the left, you've got your SD card reader port there and your USB port there. Step one, we're going to put the gantry onto the base. That's going to go into these four screw holes. And for that, we're going to use four of these M5 bolts with the lock washers. The tool that we're going to use for that is this Allen key with this special end goes into there and it just gives you a little bit of movement in it. Ensure that all the cables are brought to the rear away from the two, from the four holes. And get the bolt, put the locking washer on. Just move it over the edge. push it up over and then get the gantry and pop it on top. Now the thing to remember here is that the printer head plates need to be facing away from you if you're doing it from the back. I'm not going to fully tighten them at the moment, I'll just put them all in. And again, making sure that the locking washer is in place. Right, that's all four secured into place. 
Assembling the gantry is probably the most awkward bit because you've got to go from underneath. Now we're going to put the printer heads on and we're going to flip it round so that you can see it from the front. The printer head just fits on. You see it there, it's actually keys in place so you can't get it wrong. And again, from the front, E2 is on the right hand side, E1 is on the left hand side and all you're doing is making sure that the fan is on the outside on both of them. And from the back, use the supplied M3 bolts. And the same with E1. With both printer heads in place, we now put the spool holders on. And to do this, get the spool holder. We're going to be fixing it in this direction. So get your smallest bolt now with the nut, you just see it on the inside as well, it's shaped on the inside. Just screw that on, but you don't fully tighten it. Do the same with the second one. Again, with the shape on the inside. Don't fully tighten it and then we'll pop it on. Again, we're going to fit these from the rear. The bolts just slide into the channel on the back. Move it out to the right hand side with the first one and then tighten up. And the spool holder pointing backwards. Same with the second one. Pop the nuts into the channel. Move it over to the left and then just tighten it. Now it's time to connect the cables. So if we get the heat bed cable, connect that. It's keyed so it can only go in one way. Then we need to connect up the print heads. And for that, we're going to use these two cables. The first cable we're going to connect is connector one to printer head one. It actually says connector one on the top of it, so you can't go wrong. So connector one to connector one, and then connector two to connector two. and then connect to two. So first let's connect the step motor and this is Z1, it actually says it on there, but it's keyed, it'll only go in one way and you just push it home. And then this is the stop and again it's keyed, it'll only go in one way, just pop it in until it clicks. Just repeat that with Z2. And then it's the X1's to the stepper motor and the stop. And again, keyed so it can only go in one way. It's one. And two, and repeat it on the other side. This is a filament run out detector switch. And basically the filament goes in the top, comes out of the bottom, and is connected to the 3D printer there. And if the filament runs out, it basically means that the machine will know that there's no more filament going in. Nice and easy to connect. Simply get it. Again, it's keyed, can't go in any other way. And it just pushes home. And that's it. Same with the second one. But from the back, that's how it should look. We just need to do a bit of cable management now and then I'll spin it round. And this infill strip, it just tidies everything up. So you use it to put in the track. It's not something I'm going to be using at the moment, but I may get back to it later. Uh, it definitely tidies it. And now we'll uh, get the glass put back onto the heat bed. Right, let's get it switched on and powered up then. I know this is all about leveling the bed. Uh, obviously it needs to be level or you're just not going to be able to do any 3D printing. Uh, the first thing to do is press the center button which takes both the printer heads home press the settings button go to leveling you've already uh, taken the printer heads home and now you need to get a piece of paper put it onto the bed 
and this is to get the printer head the right distance away from the bed. So you press the bottom left, it drops down, and the paper needs to be not trapped, but there needs to be a bit of friction there. What I suggest at this point is go onto YouTube and, um, well, you're already on it, obviously, but just have a look at bed leveling videos. Um, this took me a long time to do. When you've leveled all four corners numerous times, use the Allen key to unlock the adjustment on the second head. Now we're doing this so that we can set the setting second head at the same height as the first head. At this point, you need the supplied spanner and basically put it into this slot. By turning it to the right, you raise the head. By turning it to the left, you lower the head. And what you're trying to do is on the bed, get it to the same level as the first head and then both heads then are all aligned. Put the spools onto the holders and then it's just a case of feeding the filament through the sensor, which can be a bit tricky, and then popping it into the printer head itself. Make sure you use the feed in function for this. Right, because we've got the two heads, we need to make sure the offset's right. So if you go to, um, if you go back and then press on the SD card, you'll come up with a file in there, which is an offset file. And basically, this is going to uh, print, um, it's, it's basically a cube, but inside that cube is the other colour printed. Um, and you'll be able to visually see whether the offset's working or not. This is the nozzle offset test print. And um, basically you can see the color on the inside and the white on the outside. It's correct because the color doesn't go over the square. If it did do, uh, it means that the offset wasn't correct because you've got two print heads, they need to be um, in sync. What you'd have to do is you'd have to move the X and the Y, which is a really easy thing to do. Right, so once everything's calibrated, I downloaded another print file from the manufacturer's website and you can see it printing here. Um, we'll see it as it goes along. I pulled this off the 10 log website Again, it's just a test print, but it's printed absolutely fantastically. The only thing for me is, if I bring it down, it took nine hours and five minutes. Um, so there is something that I need to tell you about this because I really, really struggled. Um, so I'll go through that in a moment, but let's just take it off. Obviously, this is what it came with. And you basically just push it underneath. Take off that. And that is absolutely stunning. It's perfect. It's hollow inside. It was um, it was really fun to watch, to be honest with you. Um, but a great test print. And I'll go through now the, the thing that I had to do to actually make it work, because I had so many attempts at it before I figured out what the problem was. Okay, so the challenge I had with, well, with all of the 3D printing to start off with was this and basically what was happening was was this and basically it was uh, it was removing itself from the hotbed so as the printer head was going over it it would start catching it and it would knock it and it would just knock it off the hotbed now i had to go online to see what the problem actually was and basically the heat bed it wasn't hot enough uh, so when you, when you do a 3D print, everything is, is in that program. So it tells it how, how hot the hotbed's got to be, the heat bed's got to be, how long it does this, what it does with the nozzle, where it moves to, etc., etc. And it, it was telling the heat bed to be 45 degrees. Um, I increased that 
so and what I found online was if it's not hot enough it basically starts to curl at the edges and obviously if it curls it comes up and that's when the nozzle was getting it so what I did was I increased the heat of the heat bed to 80 and it solved it like that now although the the program came from 10 log itself I think that the issue is the glass is very very thick so even though the heat bed may have been the right temperature, to actually bring the glass up to the right temperature as well, I think that was the problem. But as I say, I increased it from 45 to 80 and it solved it. Um, one thing that you've got to watch, again, inside the program, it changes all the parameters uh, depending on what's required. And even though I took it up to 80 degrees, it brought it back down to 45 again um, once it had done about two layers so I just had to watch it and take it back up to 80 but as you can see perfection in miniature so that's a tip that watch the heat on your hotbed so in summary what would I say about this I'd say it's absolutely fantastic um, there's so much playing around with this that I can do now. I am a novice 3D printer, can't deny that. Um, but what that means is that I'm going to have fun learning. One of the things that I'm going to get printed up is, I lose the, uh, I have a tendency of losing the cap off the camera. So I've got a Canon camera, I'll take the cap off, put it in my pocket and I always lose it somewhere. Well, there's something that you can print that actually goes on the strap of the camera and when you take the when you take the front off the camera it just goes onto the 3d print that you've done uh, so you're not going to lose it that way so as i said lots of things to play with uh, the one of the things that i love about this is that you can use the two colors on it you don't need to mess around it does it all by itself you can also do the mirror printing and the um and the duplication printing both of those things really useful just depending on what you're using it for but really useful if you are using those applications so for me this is a huge recommendation absolutely fantastic love playing with it as far as the filaments go there's loads of different filaments that you can get um so for example you can get a pva filament which um it helps with certain models when you're building them they've got something to rest on so the pva is basically the bridge and then you put it into water the pva melts and you've just got the the model that you actually wanted you can also get lots of other filament as well sparkly filament you can get wood grain effect filament so i'm very much looking forward to playing with this in the future but definitely a recommendation